I'm absolutely delighted that so many friends are here with us this evening. Allow me to single out in particular two past Hudson Institute honorees. Our 1996 honoree, Dr. Henry Kissinger. <laughs> and we will hear from him shortly. And our 2011 honoree, my pal, Senator Joe Lieberman. Each of these men has served with incredible distinction in public life, and everyone in this room owes them a debt of gratitude. But we at Hudson Institute know how to read the tea leaves. 2015, after all, it's the year of the political outsider. So we decided to bring as our special guests this year, or this evening, a real New Yorker, a tough negotiator, a huge personality, <laughs> someone who speaks his mind, even on social media, and someone who dominates the news cycle, a man with a vision that trumps all others, <laughs> the man with the best hair in New York, our 2015 honoree, Rupert Murdoch. Now, we're in uncharted territory here, Mr. Murdoch. None of our past honorees, not even Ronald Reagan, let alone Shinzo Abe, George Shultz, or David Petraeus, have ever played themselves on The Simpsons. <laughs> and you've done it twice. Now, talking about uncharted territories, Mr. Murdoch, you've achieved genuine diversity this evening, something I think that simply may violate the laws of physics. You've managed to bring together Bill O'Reilly, Walter Russell Meade, Scooter Libby, Henry Kissinger, and Jerry Hall, all in the same room, even if only for just a couple of hours. In all seriousness, uh, tonight we're, we are surrounded by old and new friends. All together, and many people who are very dear to this institution, all together, thanks to your support, we've raised more than $1.1 .1 million for Hudson Institute this evening. My heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you for your generous and timely support. My colleagues and I are deeply grateful. We're especially grateful to our hosts, let me start with uh, Henry and Marie-José Kravis. Marie-José is our vice chair. And a formidable economist in her own right. And anyone whose writing survives Marie-José's red pencil deserves their own award, as all of us know. And you'll hear from her after Rupert Murdoch's remarks. Our other hosts, Fox News, 21st Century Fox and News Corp. Our host committee, Roger Ailes. The Honorable Elaine Chow, my old friend and the most, <laughs> the most accomplished labor secretary in US history, and a person without whom this event would not have been possible, James and Lachlan Murdoch. <laughs> Jacques Nasser, who wins the Distance Award. He came all the way from Australia for this evening. Point 72, Asset Management, Jerry Spire, Robert Thompson, <laughs> Hudson Chair Emeritus, Alan Tesler and his wife, Frances, <laughs> Hudson Chair Emeritus, Wally Stern and his wife, Betsy, We're all deeply great, we're, all of us at Hudson are deeply grateful to each of our benefactors, our table sponsors, and our friends. This is really a historic evening for Hudson Institute. I am especially pleased to make a major announcement of the largest single gift in the history of Hudson Institute. 
$10 million from a donor who chooses to be anonymous. This magnificent gift, which is going to our endowment, will assure that this organization is around long beyond the time that any of us here in this room will be. So it is very deeply appreciated, and uh, the, it is very, very deeply appreciated, let me simply note. <laughs> Mr. Murdoch. We are so pleased to honor you with our Global Leadership Award. Hudson Institute honors you not because you're a conservative, but because you're a revolutionary. You've transformed global media, not by standing athwart history and yelling stop. Sorry, my friend Rich Lowry, wherever you are, and congratulations to National Review on your 60th anniversary, but by being a visionary by seeing around corners, actually beyond mountains, sensing transformative possibilities that others simply couldn't, taking gigantic risks all along the way to inform, to entertain, and build new markets, while championing the ideas that we at Hudson Institute value so deeply, American national security and US leadership, and the unmatched power of free markets and free people. Like you, Mr. Murdoch, we at Hudson Institute do not settle for the status quo or the conventional wisdom. We, too, know that sense of being so far ahead of the curve that you stand alone, putting your reputation and resources on the line until that wonderful moment that even the skeptics celebrate your wisdom. For more than five decades since our founding by the late and great geostrategist Herman Kahn, this has been our calling changing policy for the better, being prescient on critical issues, especially those overlooked by the conventional wisdom. Hudson Senior Fellow Michael Duran was the first to warn comprehensively that the Obama administration's negotiations with Iran weren't aimed at preventing Iran from getting nuclear weapons, but were a fool's errand aimed at reassuring Iran to bring her back to the community of nations. Hudson Senior Fellow Nina Shea was the first to expose how U.S. policy in Iraq and Syria posed a profound threat to the safety of Christians, Yazidis, and the other religious minorities of the region. And she is working today to airlift Christian families to safety in Eastern Europe. Senior fellows Arthur Herman and Bill Schneider took the lead in helping Japan think through the kind of high technology defense transformation needed to meet the challenge of the rise of China and a nuclear North Korea. I am proud of our track record in bringing about policy change. I am proud of our extraordinary team of experts. But most importantly, I am proud of our mission. It's a mission that is even more critical today in this period of global, global chaos, made even worse by America's retreat from her global responsibilities. <laughs> that mission is promoting strong US leadership and international engagement as the foundation for global security, prosperity, and freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, this, I am proud to say, is Hudson Institute. Go to the screen. <laughs> 